Great job. It's now time to check out another Nigerian leaving a positive mark on the globe. Silas Adekunle had always wanted to make robotics more exciting. Today, he has created the world's first intelligent gaming robot and has also been listed as one of the world's most revolutionary engineers. Let's check him out. Failure is a natural part of the journey. If you're not failing, you're not trying anything new. My name is Silas Adekunle. I'm a robotics engineer, a robotics entrepreneur. Check me out. I was born in Ibadan, so and then we moved to um, Ocean State. And um, growing up, you know, the, the things I loved was uh, wildlife, which we have an abundance of in um, in in, uh, in Nigeria. My mom was a medical nurse, and you know, UK had this outreach program where they were, you know, taking they had a shortage of nurses and inviting nurses and these types of programs. So, you know, that my mom traveled. We were home with with uh, with uh, with, uh, with with my dad, and then eventually we all went over to to go and join her. We all went there. I think we, we arrived in January. That's winter. It was cold. I remember very well, like growing up and you know going to school, and someone's like, "Oh, do you have a cow? Do you ride a cow? You know, do you live in huts?" And I'm just like, "What, what videos are you guys watching? Where are you getting all these stories from? Like, is it, like Nigeria, is it, you have cities. You know, what, like, what, what are you thinking?" I went to university to study robotics, and I was also a big gamer. So I love gaming. So the things that we were learning about robots, I think, well, this thing is perfect to teach maths and sciences and you can, it's a lot more exciting than all of the boring stuff that we've been learning. So why don't we um, use robotics to teach these fundamental principles? And then the thing I did differently was, okay, sometimes robotics can be boring. Well, why don't we add gaming as a layer on top of that? So you're not just building a robot, you're building a video game character that can then, you know, like Mortal Kombat or something that can, that can battle each other, things like that. And then I saw that that idea picked up in the classroom. The students were a lot more interested, things like that. It's kids that would normally bully each other, argue, they were a lot more interested. Then I looked around at the toy industry. You know, at the time, it was like, you buy a robot, it's not really a robot. It's not like something that you see in a, in a movie. It's just this thing that just goes, you know, it's very basic. Why can't we take this idea and use it in the, in the you know, toy industry and change the type of toys that, that people see? So that was the start of a, a six-year journey to then create a company called Reach Robotics. Oh, and over the, the life of the company, you know, raised north of $15 million, was generating the millions of revenue. We had a distribution deal with, uh, with Apple, which is one of the biggest consumer electronics uh, uh, company in the, in the world. Personally, in terms of the journey, that also allowed me to think, look, Anything you set your mind to, you can create, you can bring to life. And that was the foundation for, well, you know, why don't we do this on a bigger scale? Why don't we start looking at how we can get robotics onto the African continent? My name is Salah Sadekunle. I'm a robotics entrepreneur, a robotics engineer, and you've just checked me out. Putting Nigeria and Africa on the world map, one robot at a time. Fantastic. Now to a quick reminder of our top story. We looked at how prominent Nigerian cultures deny women right to inheritance. And that's where we end today's episode of the program. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out more content from us at bbc.com forward slash Africa and channelstv.com. Until next time, I'm Ajake Hulotsi. Bye for now. <laughs>